Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Kelvin and today we're going to tackle one of the biggest challenges in life sound, feedback. Now, whether you're new to live audio or an experienced engineer, feedback is something we've all dealt with and it's annoying, it's loud, and it can disrupt even the best performances if it isn't handled properly. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is feedback? Now, feedback happens when the sound from a speaker is picked up by a microphone and fed back into the system in a loop. Now, this creates a high-pitched squeal, howl, or a low rumble that nobody likes. Now, essentially, it's an audio loop where the mic hears the speaker, amplifies that sound, and then the speaker plays it back, and so on. Each cycle getting louder and more intense until you have that screaming sound. Now, let's talk about why feedback happens. There are a few common causes. First, mic placement is a major factor. If your microphone is too close to a speaker or pointing directly at it, the chances of feedback are high. The mic picks up sound from the speaker, which then reamplifies it, causing that audio loop. Second, gain levels. When the gain on a microphone is too high, the mic becomes extra sensitive and can pick up more sounds from the speaker, creating a feedback loop. Now, gain structure is crucial for feedback control. So aim for a balanced setup where the gain is strong enough to capture sound, but not so high that it's picking up every little noise. Third is room acoustics. Room acoustics can contribute to feedback. Now, it, it, in rooms with lots of reflective surfaces, sound bounces more, making it easier for a microphone to pick up unwanted reflections from speakers. This is why you might notice more feedback in a room with hard walls and floors versus a room with carpets and curtains. All right, let's talk prevention. There are a few key strategies to keep feedback under control. First up, positioning. Keep microphones as far away from, from speakers as possible and avoid aiming them directly at each other. Try position mics behind speakers whenever possible. This is where cardioid or unidirectional microphones come in handy since they pick up sound primarily from the front and reject sound from the back. Secondly, control your gain. Avoid cranking up the gain to extreme levels. Now you can start by setting the gain for a clear but controlled level to a clear but controlled level using your mixer's meters to ensure it is strong and not picking. Remember, more gain means more sensitivity, which means a higher risk of feedback. You can check out my video on how to set gain on a mixing console. I've linked it in the description. Next, use EQ to cut problem frequencies. Every room has certain frequencies that are more prone to feedback. These are usually the high or low ranges. By cutting these frequencies slightly on your EQ, you can reduce the chances of feedback without impacting the overall sound quality. If you're dealing with a lot of feedback issues, a feedback suppressor or notch filters on your EQ can be a lifesaver. Now these devices or settings can automatically detect and reduce frequencies that are causing feedback. Now, they are especially useful in complicated live setups or spaces with challenging acoustics. If you use a DBX uh, drive rack PA2, there is one built in which you can use. Finally, keep an eye on your monitor levels. Stage monitors are often the biggest feedback corporates because they are aimed directly at the performance mics. Now, keep monitor levels as low as possible while still allowing performers to hear themselves clearly. One key to achieving this is by reducing the stage volume as much as possible. Keep your drums shielded if you can and keep guitar and bass amplifier cabinets to low volume so that you don't have to crank the monitor volume to the highest level for the performers to hear themselves. You can also consider using in-ear monitors which can almost eliminate the, the risk of feedback from stage monitors. Now, what if feedback happens mid-show? Don't panic, there is a quick checklist to get things back under control. First, if a feedback starts, lower the volume of the affected channel. There is a quick way to stop feedback loop until you can make other adjustments to actually tackle it. Second, check your mic position. Sometimes a simple adjustment like angling the mic slightly away from the speakers or pulling it back can solve the problem. Next, go to your EQ and find the frequency causing the feedback. Now often it's in the higher frequency range, so try making a small cut there. If your mixer has a parametric EQ, 
you can target that specific frequency and reduce it without affecting the overall sound too much. Lastly, if your system has a notch filter or feedback suppressor, now is the time to use it. This can help quickly cut out the problem, problem frequencies and prevent the feedback from reoccurring. There you have it. Feedback can be a real pain, but with the right strategies, you can prevent it from ruining your show. Now, remember, feedback usually comes down to mic placements, gain control, and room acoustics. So if you keep those in check, you'll be well on your way to a clean, feedback-free mix. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any questions or additional tips for controlling feedback. Also, check out my course on the fundamentals of live audio engineering with link in the description and sign up for channel memberships, membership for some extra perks from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.